I am so in awe of Aston Villa. They are everything that I want Chelsea to be. When you look at their team, when you look at the way they play, when you look at the application, it was just a sight to behold. The whole end in full voice. Villa Park rocking like it's 1982 again. It really was a spectacular game of football. John McGinn with a winner. A purely brilliant performance from him. He is an astonishingly good player. And for Arsenal, I don't necessarily think it's the end of the world. Lots of teams are going to drop points at Villa Park. Aston Villa are such a daunting prospect for everyone. And when you think about the week that Aston Villa have had, in the same seven days, they have beaten Tottenham, Manchester City and Arsenal. In the space of four days, they have beaten last year's champions and last year's runners-up. In the space of four days, they've beaten a treble winners and a team that were top of the league going into this weekend. It is astonishing how good Aston Villa are. For Arsenal, I think it's a bad day at the office. I really do. I think it's fine. If I were an Arsenal fan, I wouldn't panic. I'd panic if you don't beat Brighton next week. But I think that there will be some convalescence. There will be some home truths spoken. I think Mikel Arteta will be incredibly disappointed. There was a, a wastefulness in front of goal. Arsenal were very profligate today and they should have scored goals. Aston Villa playing that high line really did play into Arsenal's hands. And the fact that Arsenal didn't take any of the chances that they had was... Not acceptable. The Odegaard miss when Kai Havertz did really well. He's playing well, isn't he? Annoyingly well, in fact. But the fact that they didn't score, I do not know. They had the ball in the back of there twice, didn't they? Two disallowed goals. So many missed chances. The penalty that probably should have been given, but Arsenal were just trying and trying and trying, and they could not find a way through this Aston Villa team. This Aston Villa team, however, need to be taken incredibly seriously. They really are a, 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 just a truly mesmerising, dazzling team. And the kindest thing that I can say about them is they are everything that I want Chelsea to be. When I watch Aston Villa play football, do you know how I feel? Do you know what the emotion that comes across me in waves, it just sort of overwhelms me? Jealousy. When I look at the, the way that a manager has landed, you know, he took over a club that were in total disarray. Steven Gerrard had left that club in, in border, borderline on the abyss. They were all over the place. They didn't know who they were. They didn't have an identity. The players weren't happy. He treated Mings terribly, brought in Coutinho foolishly, and they were all over the place. Totally and utterly all over the place. Now, before we get into it, I need to let you know that I've partnered with NordVPN on this video. Trust me, everybody needs a bit of VPN action in their life. It has elevated my life beyond recognition. You know the 3 p.m. blackout? It doesn't apply to you if you simply sign up with NordVPN. That's right. It allows you to watch goals from all over the world. It allows you to watch goals from the Premier League. It allows you to watch matches that perhaps you shouldn't see. You know, when you go on Twitter, sometimes it will tell you that this goal will not be served in your location. Not anymore. All thanks to NordVPN. And guess what? It is so affordable. It is comparable to the price of a cup of coffee and one login will allow you to partner with six different devices. So you can share it out between your mates. You can have it on your various different devices. NordVPN is the VPN action that you need in your life. Trust me. Also, not that you would, but let's pretend for a moment that you were doubting what I'm saying here. There's no risk attached. It is completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you try it out and for one reason or another decide that it isn't for you, you get your money back. No risk at all. Literally no jeopardy. And there is more good news. There is even a discount if you use my sign-up code. All you have to do is head over to nordvpn.com forward slash Rory. The link is, of course, in the description below. Hope you enjoyed the video. And what happened? Unai Emery arrives and they never look back. Last season, they only, it was a meteoric rise up the table, away from relegation, and they were brilliant. This year, they're league contenders. I don't think they're going to win the Premier League, but they are capable of winning the league. And it is actually doing a disservice to them and to the competitiveness of the Premier League if we don't at least acknowledge that they are title contenders. They are truly brilliant. They have won 15 games in a row at home. They have won 15 games at home. You only play 19 in a season. What an achievement from Unai Emery. And now I'm going to say it. Unai Emery is an elite manager. He is genuinely elite. He is comparable to the very best. Now, I don't think he is the very best. I don't think he's as good as Jurgen Klopp. I don't think he's quite as good as Pep Guardiola either. But he is knocking on their door. 
and he is head and shoulders above every other manager in the league. Head and shoulders. Twice the manager that Ten Hag is. Twice the manager that Ange Postacoglu is. Twice the manager that Mauricio Pochettino is. Just to compare this. You know when I say I'm watching Aston Villa and I'm full of jealousy because I'm looking at the way that their team are playing and I'm looking at the application, the cohesion, the desperation to win, the fight, the intensity, the burst in their lungs, putting everything on the line to make sure that Aston Villa win, to make sure the whole end is in full voice and to make sure that the badge on their chest is being treated with pride. Compare that to Chelsea. Compare John McGinn to Enzo Fernandez. Enzo Fernandez is meant to be the boy, right? He won the World Cup. He scored that goal against Mexico. He's the main man. Lionel Messi said he's a great player. John McGinn is a better player than Enzo Fernandez. It's not even controversial, is it? It's not even controversial. Off the top of my head, I can think of John McGinn having brilliant game after brilliant game. I can think of Enzo Fernandez having about... I can't even think. If you try and think of Enzo Fernandez having a good game for Chelsea, been there a year, you could definitely count the games on one hand and you probably got fingers to spare. John McGinn is a geezer. Look at Dougie Luiz. Dougie Luiz, compare that to Moises Caicedo. Compare the performance of Dougie Luiz to Moises Caicedo. Compare Unai Emery to Mauricio Pochettino. Unai Emery won 15 games in a row at home. Chelsea, this season, we've played eight games at home and we have won two. It's pitiful. We have won two games at home. Ollie Watkins is everything that I want Nicholas Jackson to be. Leon Bailey, the way that... The way that this Aston Villa team have elevated and become just a sensational, genuine title contender. This is it. And look, I don't think they're going to win the league. But they won the league when? 81? There's a, this is, could be the closest they've come since then. They, they, in fact, the year that Daly and Atkinson got injured, they would have won the league. I'm convinced. Man United won it that year, didn't they? But I'm con- when Steve Bruce scored those two late headers. But I'm convinced that this is the closest um, that they've been for absolutely ages. And, you know, Ollie Watkins, forcing saves from David Raya, being a thorn in the side, being a brilliant centre-forward, it's it's exceptional. And Arsenal will, you know, be feeling really gutted that they didn't get something out of this. But I think that they need to rest easy. They need to see this as just being one of those games. Those kind of games happen in football. The referee wasn't on their side. There were moments where things could have gone differently. They were profligate in front of goal. It wasn't right for them. And I don't think the ref did them any favours. I don't like talking about refs, but I don't think the refs did did them any favours. There's nothing for them to worry about, though. Their title charge is still well and truly on. I still believe Arsenal are going to win the league, but they need to rest everyone against PSV. Just rest everyone. Don't, don't, Don't force anything and make sure that they beat Brighton. And if they do, I'm sure they'll be okay because something was a bit different about Arsenal. Arsenal's season this year has been about late goals. You kind of always felt like they were going to score. Watching the game today, at no point did I actually think they were ever going to score. I think the game could have gone on another 15 minutes and at no point did I genuinely feel like they were going to score. So they need to they need to work that out. They need to, to put that right. But ultimately, I do think that they were going to be fine. But today does actually belong to Aston Villa. Can they truly win the league? I think not, but I want your thoughts in the comments below. Let me know. Do you think Aston Villa are genuine title contenders? Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please give it a like and I'll see you all in a bit.